Hi, Giovanni. Let me just make a tweet quickly for this session. So I still see you are the host. Yeah, um, it won't let me assign you, and I'm not sure why. So I just wanted to like check what account you really are on, and uh, uh, try to figure out what to do. But uh, let me just let me just send a tweet with the meeting. Uh, Hello. Hi, it it's going to be um, hi, Ale. Welcome. Okay. Uh, sorry, we ran over the last meeting a little bit. So, um, Okay, sorry. Hello, team, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well, Ade. Um, okay, I should be sharing now. You are sharing, I'm recording already. Um, do you have people in the room there with you? Yeah. Yes. I think you can just start. Uh, I've sent out a tweet for some anybody to join on Zoom. There's nobody here yet, but they can just come and they will read. Okay. Okay, so today we are going to talk about how to create tests for QGIS. Uh, you probably already know that QGIS has already a lot of tests um, which are automatically run in a continuous integration environment which is called Travis and they are automatically run every time anybody makes a pull request or a commit into the core and if the test is failing the, the commit will not be accepted and will not enter in the code base um, so let's see how can we find the already existing tests and how can we create some simple tests uh, let's go to the main QGIS site called repository and you will find here this uh, tests folder and inside the test folder there is a there are a couple of folders right actually and the most interesting for us are the test data folder inside this folder you can place any layer that you need uh, for your test or maybe some um, comparisons for, um, they should be here, right? Oh, this, um, yes, uh, if for example, your test produce an image and you want to compare the image which is produced by your test with a control image, you put it here in this folder, control images, and back to the previous folder up one level, uh, we were in the test data, and in the SRC folder, you find all the available tests, each, um, each directory is um, dedicated to a particular group of tests. So for example, if for the 3D stuff, you will find a test under the 3D directory. For the core, you will find the tests under core. But these are all C++ tests. The Python tests are in their own folder under Python, and they are all here in the same directory. Was it really just me, the last one to make a comment here? Yes. <laughs> um, so this was just to show you how the, the code is organized inside the main um, QGIS repo. And now let's, let's uh, talk in a little bit in general about testing. There are mainly two types of tests that we are uh, using in QGIS. Uh, the standard type is the unit test. So a unit test is a test uh, which is supposed to test a particular 
feature or a particular class. And they must be very independent and insulated so uh, the test can be repeated without interfering with other classes or with other parts of the code. So the purpose of a unit test is to test the most, the minimum, the smallest unit of code which is possible to test with, with, with a common sense, of course. So you, you just, you don't test a single line of code, you test functions or probably a single class. And then we have the integration tests. Integration tests are meant to test how our code can talk with other parts of the code or with other applications. Let me make an example to make it clearer. Uh, for example, we have WMS. WMS is it's an external service. We do not have uh, control over the endpoint, and, but we need to test that our QGIS is able to talk to a, a remote WMS server. And this would be an integration test because we are inter testing the integration between QGIS and another application. But uh, more in general, we can talk about integration tests even if we are testing different uh, parts of the same application. Uh, well, it's, it's a little bit, little bit uh, smoky, this, this part. Uh, it's not uh, just black and white, it's a little bit gray. But anyway, this is one of the most important distinctions about the test that we have. Uh, I would say that we have 99% of unit tests, it's just probably 1% or maybe something more of, of uh, integration tests. In particular, we have integration tests uh, with the database, when we talk with the database, like PostJS, or when we talk with the WMS, the WFS, and so on. But we have few of them. But they are really very important, especially because for, for the WMS and WFS, we are, we are testing, and WFST and so on, we are testing against our own QG server. So this is particularly complicated because we are uh, launching an instance of our QG server, so we are testing basically that the QGIS can talk to QG server, which is particularly important. And sometimes they fail, and so you find uh, that uh, you, you fix the bug, and so it's very important that those tests are, are in the, the code base. So let, let's uh, try to uh, create um, a, very, a very simple test. Uh, I'm going, this is how I do, there are several ways to do that. Um, I, I find it useful to uh, start experimenting inside QGIS. And then when I have an idea of how things work, I transfer the code into an independent Python script and that Python script becomes the test. So I'm starting now. QGIS. No. Oh, well, yeah, sorry, because I was testing something different right before I came here. Okay, so let's start it. For real this time. Okay. Oh, this screen is very small. I'm sorry, so it can be a little bit <laughs> difficult to, to see real things here. Uh, anyway, uh, to test, you can use the console, the Python console. I am using my own IPy console, uh, which is basically Python console inside inside QGIS because uh, well, I like it. I, I wrote it, so I use it. <laughs> And so what are we going to test is a very simple test on uh, the vector layer and we are using the memory provider so it's easy to, we don't need any external data for that, we just create the layer on the fly and we make a simple test to check that uh, if we add some features to the layer, the layer extent actually changes. Uh, this is a typical provider test this test already exists inside code. It's just I didn't know really what to what to do. This is really simple, and so what we can start to do is to create. Um, let's do this. Well, yes. So we are going to create. Can you see that? Or is, is it too small? Okay. okay. So we are creating a QGIS vector layer. Type is point. Uh, we have the CRS, and we have a single field named PK. The name of the layer is test and the provider is memory. This is one of the standard ways to create a vector layer inside, uh, inside QGIS. So we create this layer and we can just make the first test. The first test could be, is this layer a valid layer or not? 
So VL dot is valid. This should return true. So I'm basically uh, running the test manually now, and then I will put it on a script and verify and turn that into a real test. Okay? So this is what I normally do, but you can do it the other way around. You can just create a Python script and run it directly without experimenting first in set pages, but I find it more and more easy to start. Uh, what to do next? We want to do to add some features, so at least one feature, otherwise we have no extent, no valid extent, because we have no features. So uh, we can create a sing, uh, first features, F1, and we have this, I don't know if we have this valid uh, also, yes we have it. So we could test this. The feature is for that is not valid because we didn't add any attribute, we didn't add any geometry, so this feature is just an empty, an empty box. Uh, but what we are going to do now is to add some uh, some uh, attributes. We need just one because this layer has just one uh, column, pk. Um, so should we add one? Uh, why is that? Mm, okay, yeah, the set attribute, sorry. Um, so this is the, the API call set attribute and you pass an array. Uh, the array contains all the values of the columns for that feature. In this case, it is an integer. Uh, so we, I pass just one. This would be the primary key of my first feature in my layer. And this does, doesn't return anything, so we cannot test anything. Well, we could test that this feature has this <coughs> attribute set up, so we could call attributes and verify that we have this one inside. This should be verified in the test, because in this, this way we can uh, make sure that the set attributes works, right? Uh, then we can add a geometry uh, set. <coughs> Geometry, I'm uh, building a geometry on the fly from uh, a WKT string. So this is a point, uh, uh, longitude is 9 and latitude is 45. Uh, it's actually pretty close from where I live. And uh, we set the geometry. And okay, I think that our feature is uh, ready. And we can add this feature to the layer. So uh, VL dot uh, add features. We have two versions of that. You, you see, we have add feature and add features. Uh, we can. I usually use only this one because you can add multiple features at the same time. You pass it on array and array, and in this case, this array just contains a single feature, right? Oh, sorry, features. Okay, uh, if I'm not wrong, this uh, returns something and return a result and a feature. So we can get them from this call. If I'm not wrong, no, this is not true. Oh, probably just let's do this. this. Okay, so we have a result. And result is false, I don't know why. I forgot to do something. Did I do something, anything wrong? Excuse me? Oh yeah, right, right. So oh, what I need to do here, I, I do not want to add, uh, use the edit buffer, so um, I need to use the data provider and add the features through the data provider, otherwise, Okay, there are two, two ways to add a feature, uh, in general, to edit a layer. One is using the edit buffer, and so you can roll back the transaction, you can uh, it basically you change the buffer and then you commit the changes. And, or you can do directly, go directly to the data provider. And this is much better for this purpose. So we cannot, we can skip all the logic to use the edit buffer. So. This should work, and uh, as I was re remembering, it returns uh, true if everything was right, and we could test this value. And it, it returns a set of features, so the instances of the features that were added. 
Okay. So we could test this one too. Okay, now uh, what we can do is uh, update uh, the layer extents. Uh, this should happen automatically if you are using the editing buffer and uh, I don't think it happens automatically if you go directly into the provider. Um, anyway, we can call update the stance just to make sure that the stance are really updated. So we are calling this and now we can test the extent. We get the extent from the layer and we can Okay, output the extent as WKT coordinates, so we get the string. And the extent is 945, 945. It's okay, we have just a single feature, the extent is a point, everything as expected. And so we can add an, a new feature, a second one. Um, F2 set attributes, we uh, set the PK to two, and set geometry, we create another geometry, this time is not 945, it's 1046, so we should see an extent this time because we have two points in this layer. Then uh, we can uh, add the feature, so VL dot data provider at, at features F2. We can, we have true again, so it's working. And we have a lot update extents. And, and we can output the extent again. And now we have 9.45 and 10.46. Everything as expected. So now we have the basic uh, code for our test. What we can do is, uh, and there is history here, so we can uh, output all the, the lines that we entered in the console. I usually copy all this stuff, and I use a, a Python code editor, and I proceed with the test. I have already done that because I tested all this <laughs> a few minutes ago. And to start a new test, uh, you should probably, okay, where we are now? We are inside that folder under tests, as a SRC Python, where we have all the Python tests. You can uh, look around and find a test uh, which is uh, similar to what are you trying to do, and just copy that test and change what you need and put your code, your code inside. This is what I normally do. Uh, but let's let's describe all the all the lines here. Hmm, much better. So, first line is standard uh, header for for a header for a, a Python script. You usually fill with your name, the date, uh, and so on. There is a missing piece here uh, that we can add later. Is uh, usually very handy run this test uh, as ctest minus r and the name uh, of the test that you would give later. I will show you how it's make list of uh, So this is going to be filled in. Uh, so if anybody wants to run this test, you can just copy this line and paste it in the console and the test will run. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is a common line. Common line. This is a standard way to run tests. Uh, you usually use the C test binary inside the build directory. Usually it's named build, lo build local, build something yeah, under the main source tree. This is your build directory. But we, we can talk about that later. Uh, so let's go through the script and. We are importing from QGScore the, the classes that we are using here. And there is also QGIS testing uh, package, which contains a couple of utilities that makes your life easier when you want to write tests. In particular, we have this start app and a unit test, which is a, a little bit modified to, be, to work correctly with, with a QGIS test. We need this start app because QGIS uh, application needs to be initialized before you can run a test. Uh, 
to, to uh, simulate the environment that you have inside QGIS. Oh, maybe I could, I could make a, a short digression here. Um, this way of testing is uh, kind of different than running a test directly inside QGIS, inside the QGIS console. Uh, because we have no GUI, we have no, we do not have a real QGIS application running here. We have uh, something which is different, the environment is different. So um, you, there are other systems uh, that can be used to run tests directly into a real instance of QGIS. And we were using that uh, extensively in Boundless for all continuous integration tests for plugins. But this is much more complicated than, than this. And anyway, that system is not used in the official QGIS uh, continuous integration system. Uh, from utilities, uh, we can import unit test data path, uh, which contains uh, the path to the folder uh, which contains the data and control images. Uh, so it's just a sh shortcut to get this path easily. And okay, so we can start creating our class. Our class um, can be called whatever you want, but should be <laughs> uh, meaningful. So test by QGIS memory extends and I inherit from unit test test case. This is a standard way of writing tests in Python. So this, everything is very well documented in the Python main website. Uh, here we have a couple of standard um, methods. Uh, those methods are automatically run every time the, the, the class is instantiated and uh, for the class methods. So setup class and tear down class. And then we have setup and tear down. Setup and tear down, they are run before each test. While the setup class is just run once when the test starts. Because a test can contain several tests. I mean, maybe this is a bit complicated, but. <laughs> uh, so here we have just one, this is the real test. The name of the function needs to begin with test. So this is important because the test system, the test machinery will run every function, every method with start, that start with test. Um, then you add a comment inside saying what are you going to test. And here you see I have basically the same code that I run into the console before, uh, but these are the real checks. So um, there are a lot of these uh, um, assertions that you can make. Um, the most simple one is assert true and assert false, but there are also assert equal. So if I expect that function returns a particular output, I can uh, make an assertion that the output is the one that I am expecting. And let's go through the code. So basically we are creating the vector layer. Uh, here I'm testing that the, the, the layer is uh, a valid one. Then I'm adding a feature, I'm adding an attribute and setting the geometry and adding a feature. Then I update the extents and I check that the extents are correct. Then I add a second feature, uh, exactly what we did before. And this is also standard. So if you run this script um, um, without a test runner, it will just run the test which is contained. So you can use it as an independent program. And this is exactly what we are going to do now. So I can show you how this, uh, let's try, I don't, don't have it. Okay, here we go. So uh, to run the test, uh, uh, Please, Python, okay. Okay, so this is the command line that I use to run the, the test. It should be Python 3, not Python. So this is just like calling Python and the name of the script. I need to, to run this wrapper before because I'm using dif different versions of Qt. So I need to set up the environment in order to run this test from, from the shell. But you normally can ignore the first part. So the dot, dot, dot and so on. So just run Python 3 and 
the name of the test that the Python script that you want to run. And let's try it. Okay, it, the script ran correctly. There is a lot of debug output, uh, but basically this means that everything is all right. Let's change something and make the test fail. So let's say that we expected a different output here and it's 46, seven, sorry. Let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, here we have a failure. You see, fail, the test is failed. And you see why and where. So line 66, uh, there is an assertion, but we got something different outside. We didn't get 47, but 45. So we save and run it again, and this is okay again. Okay, uh, so your test is ready. Now we need to add the test to the QGIS uh, list of uh, enabled tests. And this is done inside a file called cmakelist.txt. As you can see, this is inside test src python. And here you have a list, a huge list of all the tests. You can just go to the end of the, the standard tests. Uh, there are a couple of switches here for some tests that do not run on Windows, some tests that do need the server, some tests that do need the database, but this is a standard test, so we can just edit, edit the test here. Uh, this is the path, the name of the script, test memory extends, and you pick up a name, a descriptive name, you just follow the convention of the other test. So this would be PyQG's test memory layer extends. And we can, can copy this name and put it here. So if you want to run this test from the console, and this is what Travis, so the system integration actually does. So it's running this. We can copy this one, go to the Older, we are, yes, and paste name here. I have already done that, and we can run the test from here. And you can see 100% test passed, zero test failed out of one because we are running a single test. With C test, you can run the whole suite of tests for QGIS. Uh, so if you don't set minus R and you just run C test, it will run 393 tests. It will take some time and probably fail. Uh, so minus R is a regular expression where you can filter the test that you want to execute. Okay, that said, you should be good to go. You need to rebuild QGIS and uh, to make a pull request if you want this test to be included in the, in the main code of QGIS. And I yeah, just wanted to say that you can do pretty much the same uh, um, using uh, a C++ test and for running C++ test you go into the folder test SRC and you can have a look to the existing tests I probably want have one of the one already loaded yes this one this is a very simple one is a test uh, for QG settings <coughs> Uh, this is written in C++, so you are basically including uh, the class that you want to test. The QGIS uh, unit types, uh, this is used to, to check, particularly because of the test. This test is uh, checking that um, from the QGIS settings, you get out the correct uh, instance of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the QGIS type. It's, I don't want to go too much into the details. Um, Okay, this description is plain wrong. Fix it. And this is the test. Um, you need to put your test uh, functions inside private slots. So we are in C++ now. And this is our function. And the function basically have these methods. You verify and you compare. This is the same that assert true. And this is the same that assert equals. There are other macros that you can use to, to do further checks. And then what is very important is at the end, you need to uh, include these um, test QGIS settings, so the, name, the same name of the, the source file 
MOC and you need to pick up name like we did before and you need to add this to the CMake list .txt file in the same folder of the test. I think it should be pretty much everything you need to do for, for the C++ test. And once you've done that, you can run the test in, well, directly inside Qt Creator, of course. You can use a debugger, you can step debug into the test, which is really useful, and it's probably the main reason for writing C++ tests. Um, well, there is an advantage in the using <coughs> Python is in a way that you are testing at the same time the functionality and the bindings, because uh, if you write a Python test, Okay, you are testing the functionality inside QGIS, inside C++, C++, but you are also testing the binding. So that's an advantage. Um, if you are writing a C++ test, it's maybe better to translate it into Python also, so you are sure that everything is working into Python for the, with the bindings. Uh, what else? Yes, you can run this test from C test also. So it's... Um, because the name to this test to be a sentence. <coughs> oh, I test to this. <coughs> okay, I found another one. I don't know why this probably has a different name. We need to check the name exactly into the CMake. CMake list. And this is a little bit out of scope here. Uh, well, I think that it's pretty much everything. Uh, yes, once the test is, has been loaded into the main uh, uh, code of QGIS, your test will be run automatically by the continuous integration system and you will see the test now here you click on the build icon and you go to travis this is our continuous integration platform and okay here we have something running let's find something a little bit older this is my, my stuff with history Let's uh, some, see something running. Okay, a comment by Martin. You can click here and have a look to the first one. Is uh, this is the code layout and this is the real test job? We are opening the logs. Yeah, here are the logs. And let's check the this is building. Statistics running tests here. Okay, these are all the tests that are running, and you see past, 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 past. Everything is all right, and there are 393 tests running automatically. And your test uh, will be added to this list, and you will see your test running here. And if anything fails, uh, the output is printed right uh, above the failing test. So right below the failing test, and you will be able to see why your test has failed. Sometimes it's not very easy to understand from the output of Travis why the test has failed, but this is all you get. Uh, what you can do if the test is failing, what well, first thing to do is to, to check that your test passes locally. So uh, as we did before here, running C test locally and see if your test is passing or not. If it's failing, you can use a minus V switch and this means verbose, so you will get a lot of output and you can pipe it into a less and examine the output line by line and make searches and whatever you need to understand why it's failing. You can also increase the level of output uh, uh, by uh, setting QGIS underscore the variable to something high, like four or five, and this will increase the debug output uh, to a huge amount of lines. And 
any, I didn't check the chat if uh, are there are any people remotely that have any question. Otherwise, do you have any question? I have not seen any questions so far. Okay, thank you, team. Thank you. Or if anybody has something to add, maybe I forgot something. Let's just ask directly in the chat, has anybody got any questions? I think most of the people in the chat are, or some of them are in the room there with you already. So we can... Okay. <laughs> I, I have a question. Uh, for example, I know that you had just uh, added uh, the possibility to uh, have different endpoint URLs for WFS. No, sorry, for WFS. FS, yes, yes that's, 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 it. FS, that's it. Uh, like the described API. Yes. But there are not so much WFS servers available who have this silly uh, thing. Yeah. So did you write the test for it? Yes, I wrote the test for it. Against that server? Their no, server. no, because the WFS uh, tests are run against uh, a fake endpoint which is basically a bunch of uh, temporary files where we simulate the behavior of the WFS endpoint. Uh, this is how even, even uh, Roe wrote those, those tests. But, uh, and that was very important, we also, I wrote also a test for WFST uh, integration with, with the QGIS server. And that one was failing because QGIS server uses that DCP uh, it, it contains the same endpoint for uh, get capabilities entries. But anyway, I made the modification, so now the client read that value. And that, that was something wrong, so I, I, I had to fix it. So it was very... So we are basically using it in the QGIS server, but uh, they are all the same values, so they do not point to anything different. Yeah, but that could be done in the future. It's important if you have very large, large... Um, amount of users in your WFS, so you need to, to scale well and you have to distribute, for example, have a dedicated machine for transaction and the other one dedicated for just the, the get map or, you know, uh, get features for WFS and so on. So, but anyway, that was a feature request for somebody and I took a look at that and went, let's fix it. Yeah. But, but normally you don't use external services. No, you should not do that. You do not want to do that because that would introduce another point of failure. So what we want to do is uh, the test to be able to run a, a, without anything external to interfere with that. Otherwise, maybe the test is failing because the endpoint is down or they change the URL or the DNS or there is a, a network attack and the DNS is not responding. I don't know. There could be a lot of reasons, so we do not want to introduce any other possibility to, to of failure. So it's much, much better to, to test. Uh, the problem with the test is that they must be repeatable in any condition. So I, I think that even uh, even Ward did a good job, uh, uh, had a good idea to make this, uh, this uh, fake endpoint. So anytime your <coughs> URL contains this fake endpoint uh, string, uh, it doesn't get to the network, but goes to the disk. That's how it works. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Uh, it's the graph kind of the Oh, uh, if is there a graphical uh, interface in for mm, no? What do you mean for, for yeah? Is the tests are the tests for the graphical? Ah, oh, oh, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. There are, there are. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't talk about that because mainly, mainly because I'm not so so expert in, in that kind of testing. But yes, it is possible, and uh, there are in Qt there are dedicated classes to to make tests. And so you basically can uh, click on a button, you can, uh, well, in two different ways, you can pass the, the, um, the coordinates of the point you want to click, or you can just click, say, I want to click that button with that name. And so you can make GUI tests. We do not have so many. And yeah, it's a pity, but they are much more, well, it's much more important to have the test for the libraries 
because you know that uh, QGIS is organized in libraries. Uh, so having, <coughs> having uh, uh, and, and additionally, they are not mandatory. So uh, our policy is that for the core, the test, any, any change to the core must be tested. So if you want to change anything in a core, you must write a test for it. But this is not the same for GUI and not the same for application, of course. But yeah, it's possible. There are some, not many, and it's possible, and we probably need more. So are there any uh, uh, specific places that really need this now? So or is it like also in corporate and if you write that? Or is there a list of uh, like a version? Uh, no, uh, no, unfortunately not. I don't think there is a list of, uh, because the core is uh, now, I would say, very well tested. So we have tests for all the providers and we have tests for the geometry classes. Uh, we have tests for, for processing. Uh, everything in the core, I would say, is currently uh, well tested. Uh, so, well, test for the GUI, that, that would be very welcome, I think, because that, that is a part that, which can break um, quite easily. And because we have all these uh, slot and signals connections that can break yeah, without, without notice, I mean, it's one of the, the issues with the, the QT connection system. And so I think that uh, testing the GUI, the GUI is really welcome. We have tests for the server. That could be better, of course, and could be improved. I don't know what, what, what else. Anybody has any suggestion about test that could be written? Google? Maybe Tim, you could just mention you um, that we, we're focusing on the core library at the moment. We don't have tests for the user interface or the desktop. Um, <coughs> And maybe what some strategies might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that the, okay, the tests for the core library are mandatory, so um, I think that we are pretty much complete. And not the same for the GUI. So, yeah, if you want to write some tests for the GUI, they are more than welcome. Is that what you wanted to say, Tim? Yeah, just basically that we like the focus has been all on the core library, and um, it's maybe a good time to start thinking about getting the user interface also tested. Um, and uh, uh, Qt and uh, Qt test framework has some things for GUI testing, which would be interesting for if somebody wants to really get involved to come up with some good um, like standard patterns for how we would test user interface things. Um, you, 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 with a with a cute library, you can say um, like pull up a dialog and click this button and see that the text changed. Or you know these kind of user interaction tests. But we didn't really have any standard pattern for doing this yet. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I would say it's much much more difficult, and they tend to to break. Um, much more easily because maybe you just move a button or rename a button or um, change a string and that can break the test. So, yeah, but it's important to have them. So, yes, that can be improved. Um, um, it oh, well, another point of about um, processing algorithm tests and what you need to do different um, for those kind of tests. <laughs> I'm not sure I got you, Tim. Uh, Etienne, you say it again? Etienne is also asking about proce uh, testing processing algorithms and what special considerations you need to have if you want to write processing tests. Okay, yeah, I, I'm sorry I'm not the right person to answer this question because <laughs> I never wrote a test for processing. But uh, yeah, what I, what I do know that we already have uh, tests for processing algorithms. Uh, so I don't know what they are. They are, uh, yeah, they are probably under plugins and processing. And, uh, sorry, I, I cannot answer to that question. I really don't know. Yeah, no, it's not here. I don't know. I have a question, for instance, I 
I know this, there's a plugin in PJ servers, so I can I run the test that one. Okay, I also made a pull request. This time the correct way, the server doesn't answer how it should be. I know how it should be, so in PJ server 2.18 works. I move that test also for master. Is it correct for me to make a pull request? I don't have the skills to solve that in uh, C code, but I can make a test. The most of the main test, the actual server or QGIS doesn't respond to it like it should. Is it okay to make a whole request just with the test that it fails? Oh, so you yeah. The failing test. Okay, you, you create a failing test. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, yes. Okay, one, one way, that, that's uh, something interesting to say, I think. Uh, one of the, the way you can use a test is while you, while you are developing a new feature or fixing the bug. You can start by writing the test, the failing test, and okay, this shouldn't be a failing test, this should pass. So you start modifying the code until the test passes. So this is a strategy. So there are two main purposes of a test. I and mean, one is to protect something that you have done. So you have done a new feature that must be um, must behave that way. So you so you write a test. So you make sure that anybody else who changes the code in another part of the of the API doesn't break your functionality. So it's to protect something that must be uh, exactly working that way. And this is one one of the the purposes. The other one is to fix something. So you write the failing, the failing test, and then you change your code, and or, or, or maybe it's not a bad fix, it's a new feature. So I want this new feature, I want that feature working that, that way, and I write the test. So it's a kind of design phase. And then you change your code until, or your implementation until the test passes. So these are two different ways to see um, test driven development. I don't so in, yeah. sorry, in, in my case, the problem is that I don't know how to fix it. I can write it and yeah. make a point well, for No, no, I, I, I would say that in your particular case, the best thing to do would be to open an issue on Tracker and uh, attach the test, the failing test. That would be awesome. So the developer can just download the test, run the test, and, oh, yeah, you're right, this is failing, it shouldn't be failing. Or maybe just the test is playing wrong, <laughs> but it could be a, a one fix or invalid. But if uh, you think it should work and it doesn't, it's very helpful for us because you can run the test in a debugger and see why it fails and fix it. So it's really useful. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you for watching remotely and uh, in person here. And happy testing. Bye-bye, <laughs> team.